playing a bit as well. Um, you know, seeing it during the DPC from time to time. So I think, like you say, that the axe build is, it seems to be so much of what it, you're building um, Core Marcy around these days. And we'll see if that's something Team Spirit are ready for. The hero does, if you're snowballing, it's great, but as soon as you slow down, that's yep. when things start to look a bit iffy. Like, you, it, it very it kind of reminds me of like old school TA where it's just like, it's good until it, until it starts to fall off and then it falls off hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I wonder how that scaling will go this game. Because of course, there's always going to be value with the sidekick for Mickey and with the towers with the birds. But again, with this Wyvern last pick, it, it really stops a lot of the damage. They do not have a lot of magical for Liquid. So I think the supports this game, like the warding from your unboxing needs to be exceptional to be able to catch out the Winter Wyvern first because if they don't, Collapse will every single fight be able to, to counter-initiate and, and just stop their attempts straight away. And I do think, you know, a lot of what I was seeing in the past was more of the carry, Marcy, but like you say, playing in the mid lane, you, you're not like the, the, the hero that everyone's looking to to carry the game. All that thought in the push can mid. Are oh, they going to go for him? Nisha doesn't catch up with the rebound. And push with the level up in the nature's attendance. Will not go down. Very close. They do get the D ward though. Nice read of Moposhka being in the river and was able to get a glimpse of them. So ran down to the south. So it sets up for the D ward there. And it does look like we get a two for two with the bounties. Yep. It did force out a oh, he's uh, dead. level one nature's attendant. And yeah, now he is dead. <laughs> So, all right, there you go. Yeah, first blood. I mean, they'll be able to D-Ward. You saw the ping come out straight away as yes. soon as uh, Maposhka died. So that will be a D-Ward for him as well. Who got it? Was it Boxy? Yeah, all right, Boxy gets first blood. Yep, but nice start. Good job. Like, just great level one movements. It's always interesting to see, particularly on this new patch, how teams approach the level one smoke out, get wards down in liquid, get a ward down mid on the high ground, get a ward in the enemy jungle, find a first blood and give themselves an advantage in the lanes with that a nice kind of level move there to get them uh, really good presence on the map. Ah, Marcy's Universal. Very cool. <laughs> yes, Another very cool one. Indeed. What do you know? What? <laughs> Why is Core Marcy good? Oh yeah, the Universal Hero. <laughs> okay. So I, well, I mean, we've seen a lot of, <laughs> again, it doesn't matter. What hero you are, as long as you're universal, you are getting attempted to play as a core. And I wonder if people might start to try it as a carry, like go back to what you said, which is something that we were seeing a couple months ago. I have to imagine people have already experimented with it and if it doesn't feel the greatest, why we're not seeing it as much and kind of just only in that mid lane. Yeah. Portugal, as much as... Like, Universal Heroes get all this, like, crazy efficient damage. I, I do think they're more suited to not being carried, so I think they're more suited to be played in, like, the mid and the offlane and stuff. Like, if you look at where most of the Universal Heroes, like, they don't carry as hard as, like, you know, your classic Agi Hero still. Like, if you want a real carry, you pick, you know, your Jug. He's an Agi Hero. Your Bloodseeker, he's an Agi Hero. So, um, what makes Universal Heroes is, is strong is, like, when you're played in the other core roles, because a lot of the items you get are these, like, you know, you get all three stats, so they're more utility items, so... Um, playing in the mid and the offlane is, like, for, in my opinion, where some of these universal throws are more suited. And it seems like we get to see their scaling from, from those roles as well. Like, sometimes there can be yes. some issues with, like, mid and offlane is not being able to have too much impact into late game. But if you have a Void Spirit that can just uh, easily kill a support, a Magnus from the offlane that can find pickoffs with the with the Harpoon, that is that is enough set. I mean, there's always that thing in, in Dota where you... you you want to try and tick off as many boxes as you can, right? You know, stuns, team fight, tower taking. Late game and scaling is a very big one as well because teams are so goddamn good now that you know how to slow down the game and, and try and stop one, one team from hitting their timing. A lot of fighting up top. They were trying to both contest the Lotus there, which Utoro managed to just get before the blast off. He did have a 10-1 stick that he managed to heal himself up on. But have to be careful here. The Visage starting to get some levels here. Triple Mango, so those soul assumptions are something you really have to respect in this lane. Yeah, I'm very impressed with how well they're actually doing this top lane. It seems like with the constant spam, and Zai and Boxy, both these heroes have great right-click damage, so, so yep. the moment with them being able to play their distance away from the Bloodseeker, away from the Enchantress, it probably helps out like all the other lanes are not weak as well. 
And maybe that's where some of the value from the Juggernaut comes with the, the healing ward just can keep himself and Insania both healthy. Well, and I think the other no, big thing is what happened They're up. Going to get chased down with the Blade Fury. Tries to turn around a spiteful blood grenade, but Insania with already a point in the Glaives gets some stolen wisdom. And yeah, nice start for the bottom lane. You kind of mentioned this is this could be a lane that can be tricky. If Jug gets on top of you, you've got two points in the Arcane Curse, so that's slow. I laughed at it at 10% movement speed slow. It's now 15%, so this helps out a little bit for Jug to get in close to finish off some of those skills. Good start for all the lanes, it looks like Liquid currently. Nisha is bodying mid 25 and 7 compared to the 19 and 6. Maybe not bodying. Oh, top lane, yeah, Zai. He's chasing him down. All right. Yeah. I, I was like, okay. At some point, I was like, okay, they'll let him go now. He, the Grave Chill wore off. They threw up the Soul Assumption. And like, no, no, we'll, we'll just keep chasing this. We've got boots, and he doesn't. Mid lane? Is Lal in trouble? Boxes? He's already used the blast off of that previous kill. It might not matter, though. Lyle's going to need a TP to come out from a Poshka, but it's going to be too late. Nisha might still go down, but it's just the tower that's really the main damage to us currently. So, what a start for Liquid. Yeah, uh, Boxy's techie has been huge. 3-0-1, you, you know, go back to yeah, a lot of the, the top lane dominance. Get, just getting that first blood on a techie just gives them that extra bit of regen. Um, that extra gold to play around the lane with, and also Enchantress having level 1 heal made this top lane so much weaker on the Team Spirit side, and, you know, I mentioned a lot of the reasons you have often first pick Bloodseekers to win the lane, and they're not winning that top lane. No, they're not, and I feel like this lane's only, only gonna get more difficult now, as once you get towards the, the ultimate here from Zai, may even potentially have Marcy to rotate early to help shove Yatoru into the jungle. And the Bloodseeker is someone who does not farm fast at all. As we're going to see Yatoru. A little bit of danger. Maybe just trying to stop some of the farm. Bring him down to a low health pool where he can't continue to play the lane. Or though, raindrops along with a stick just keeping him alive. Meanwhile, it's mid though. Early level 6 coming out from Nisha with the help of the damage from the Unleash. They should be able to get the Kill, but both supports Spirit there in the nick of time. Lal will still go down. Can they avenge his death? Insania looks like he's going to be okay. Another stomp up in a couple of seconds, though. Maposhka just out of range with the Centaur. Yeah. Too much move speed on the, the Silencer who finds another kill. So some more in stolen and Insania is a happy camper. Yeah. And he got. What, solo XP, I guess, for that kill, so <laughs> I guess that makes sense, but um, the nice, honestly, nice job by Spirit there. They kind of wreck Rebels having top lane, though. They're going in on Yatora. Blast off gets him incredibly low. <laughs> the raindrop save his life. I mean, this is, that's like rule number one against Visage, is by a raindrop. But Back to mid, saves Nisha. his life, but it's, it's, it's a rough lane. Die from Spirit. Both the supports still hanging around. Nice telekinesis from Mira. As soon as Nisha tries to get some distance away, he might be okay still. Lacking some of the damage as Nisha with the early stats, 1100 health, and they will not be able to go through that all. And they're really committed to this mid lane. Like the initial play there where they kind of baited Nisha's level six and kill them was fantastic. Now they're trying to, you know, play around the siege wagon where they can try and get an early tier one tower with the edge creep here. But they need to make, not getting this tower here would be pretty bad for them given that they put all this oh, resource. Well. Jump over the top. Nisha's in some danger. Boxy's going to try and protect him. It'll be an exchange, but of course, Spirit very happy with that. Once again, Nisha goes down. It might get the tower. Lol. Is he going to tick out? No, okay. He's chilling. He's chilling. Yeah. Ooh. Very close, though. Oh. He just walks up, gets the high ground D-Ward, and yeah, that tower of mid, they don't actually, it's deny range, so i to imagine they'll deny it in just a second here. At least not give Spirit a chance to come poke at it. Just looks like they'll get the kill on some of Poshka as well. After being able to pick up the rune for Nisha, so nicely done. Good placement of the ward from Liquid. Let's see what Nisha wants to do with the haste. I'd like to see him prioritize top. Zai's even drawn a circle around. Flaps is so ready right though. Now. Yeah. Playing around this top lane would be, I think, yeah, the best thing you can do if you're, you're Nisha. Or just in, liquid in general. They saw. Claps tried to move on over through the gate. They got a glimpse of him underneath the watcher. 
Yep, so straight away go down to the bottom. And now without the Winter Wyvern here, I don't think he's going to be able to continue to play with the Bloodseeker. So he wants to go bottom, but... Doesn't look like he's required to get the kill. Mickey tries to play with the Blade Fury, but Yatoro comes in. Not even required yet. Collapse was able to bring him down in the end. So very nicely done. To both sides kind of mirror the same move across the map. Again, Radiant wanted to try and slow down Yatoro top. And what spirit they wanted to try and slow down Mickey bottom. He did use the rupture, perhaps a bit of overkill there. So going to have to wait a minute before he's got another oh. rupture to play around. But yeah, Laurel. Okay, that's a little that's bit a lucky kill. with the centaur. That stun isn't going to be enough to keep him alive. A nine minute global silence. That's what they need. A little bit of extra control to help them bring down with the void spirit. Third death of the game for Lal as well. Yeah, Zany is huge on this silencer, has arcane boots and everything. So, um, support gold making a big difference here. And they're not done. They've now found their way into the, the wyvern top. That'll be rewarded for this attempt on Liquid. So a couple kills, a couple core kills as well, importantly. Insane is loving life, dude. Both the supports, high level, lot of intel. And let's see what he's going to be able to do with some of the gold that he's able to pick up at this early stage too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean we often joke about in the past, I remember like Insane, like kind of kill stealing and stuff on his Rubik and whatnot. But this is a silence, like, he's just right clicking them. Like it's not like trying to steal these kills. He's just happy to be happen to be getting all these last hits so a very fast silencer all of a sudden with 10 permanent install and not something to completely scoff at here when we come comes to the mid game and yeah spirit I, I, the big problem right now is yeah just dealing with this visage lane he's got the early phylactery so uh anybody coming near him like that grave chill just does, has this huge extra nuke um, attached to it that is just gonna completely melt you so if they want to address this visage they need to bring like several heroes up there um and it may just you may just be better off playing ultra on the map yeah. look back at some of the kills that we've we've had so far early on from liquid and just their smooth rotations across the map and when this team is rolling a lot of that is off the back of some of the supports and how active they're able to get so good stuff then we will get back underway here one interesting thing like you i mean you just mentioned the phylactery build on zai yesterday we didn't see him go down that route he, uh, he kind of went for the different build that we're seeing at the moment with the Visage. I mean, that game didn't go too long, so we didn't see it develop too far. But it was the Solar Crest. So it was the Vlad's drums into Solar. So uh, I, I really wonder when you go, what kind of item build for, for the Visage. Yeah, I'm not entirely... Definitely Phylactery is one of these items. It's it's only good as a first item. Like, you, you if you own Phylactery, you have to rush it because it's like the damage is great when you first get it like a 150 damage nuke, but it, it's, it falls off uh, very quickly. But <laughs> obviously he could have rushed at that game. He, he had a very good lane then as well, but I think Phylactery I look at as like a very snowball-y item. I think he sees an opportunity for Liquid to kind of snowball this game, and that extra damage can have like a big impact against a lot of these heroes. Um, Mika is definitely trolling, right? We're not going a second item Wind Waker after the Battle Fury. Wind, I, you know... <laughs> <laughs> question <laughs> gotta got to imagine that is indeed a troll but <laughs> it's a classic bait <laughs> that's a classic bait just queue up some absolute random shit just try and get the casters to yeah, yeah. have a spill for a couple of minutes about a useless item that absolutely means nothing Zai top lane oh, this one's going to be able to stop some of the spells afterwards they might just turn it back on a collapse no point in the cold embrace Absent a lot of danger with the soul assumption from afar. They'll use the familiars as their dirty work. And now still spirit. They want to potentially try and get a return kill. Lyle ready to go, but he's a bit hesitant running to the three members of Liquid. It's I just too damn tanky there. 1600 health and raindrops one. So just couldn't quite bring him down in the curse there. And it's going to be a concern for, for Spirit. You, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, you either need to just kind of avoid this visage and give up this top lane a bit, or if you are going to go try and address this, just bring numbers and make sure you get that kill. What just happened there is probably like the worst case outcome for them. Where you when attempt to address visage, but just don't take the kind of threat seriously enough. When do we feel like the visage is looking to leave this top lane and, and potentially maybe take mid or bottom tower? Um, I don't think... It's probably going to come down to, I guess, when the team feels like uh, some of the other cores have hit like a big item timing, but I think for the most part, 
if you're liquid, you're rotating like towards the visage. Um, heroes like Marcy want to be the ones making the move. Um, visage is just not like a natural rotator. But I think if you're visage, the, the cue to leave top lane is that hey, they bring too many heroes. I can't stick around. I'll go mid maybe. Uh, but even when, while well, like you can see here, Liquid are pressuring mid with three heroes, um, two supports by Nisha, but they're still keeping the Visage uh, around the top lane, although now he does twin gate towards bottom. It's like they do want to defend bottom tower. Maybe anticipating that Spirit are trying to slow down Mikke down bottom with the Battle Fury completed. would love to be able to find his free farm across the map and... It looks like a kill is going to be able to give him that bonus gold as well. Might even be able to get the healing water as well. Get some further injection. Mira's making them work for it. Even Nisha's is going to wrap all the way around. So all of a sudden, Liquid, they are, they got five heroes bottom. So screw yep. mid. Who needs that? Let's go for bottom instead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, bet you, I was like, the idea of this is walking from top to me. I was like, eh, it seems a little bit too far for Saipa. He's like, I'll just twin gate bottom. That's, you know, that's, that's how the map works these days. You don't really have to rotate bottom. You just, you know, you're instantly teleport there. And he still has his TP scroll. Well, what a timing, this around right? the wisdom room? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you get that pick off, you get the wisdom room. Mirror's a little bit too late. I wonder when they're going to feel strong enough for Spirit to try and fight. We've seen some attempts with Lull moving onto the side lanes to try and play with the supports, but Yutora has not been seen. In fact, Yutora's taking a triple stack out of Radiant's jungle. That's an ancient stack as well. So that's going to be pretty happy about that one is bottom lane, Boxy. Jump in once again with the global science. They're gonna look for the TP out, but he's got the familiars. Now Mira as well. Oh, that is not indeed. Zai should be able to chase down Mira. What a performance out of the visage here from Zai himself. This visage is a menace. And you know, everything about that liquid rotation just felt so calculated. I as soon as like the wisdom room spawn is like, okay, yeah, this makes sense why they brought all four here. And they as they all rotate bottom, Jug actually rotated out of the lane. He's like, okay, my team don't he got gets the kill and just leaves his team to push by himself because there's ancients top to be farmed as well as the top wisdom room. So Liquid basically rotate four bottom while Mickey rotates from bottom to top. So that they're still being very efficient with their farming patterns, still getting both wisdom runes and increasing this gold lead of theirs. Uh, somehow picking up four bounties as well. 15 minutes in is definitely going to help out with this net worth lead increasing. So yep. 5k now, Liquid. Very dominant position for them to be in. Does look like Spirit are playing behind Lull. First real move we've seen out of them. Lyle's going to jump a bit further away from the team. They're going deep inside Liquid's jungle. Nisha's going to try and help out with the bonus movement speed, but that will not be enough to get Insania out of danger. That's a bit of a streak as well for Lyle, so that's going to feel nice for the Void Spirit to claim. And usually just a five position, like using your DD rune and your Astral Steps, but getting that extra bonus gold, and I think... Oh, Toro. Start from Boxy with Zai nearby. It looks like they're going to have plenty of damage. Wow. What a jump from them. Yeah, I think Spirit were trying to group up and make moves here because they want to fight while Global's down. They had like a one minute window. It's coming up in 20 seconds now, but they're really trying to, you know, force a fight as like a group here. They've got four heroes still camping mid. One thing you usually can't afford to have happen when you're kind of making play with four heroes is that one hero who's alone getting picked off. And that's exactly what happened to the Bloodseeker. Yutora's first death of, death of the game up until then, he's been flawless with his, his kind of awareness. Will they just get boxy? They'd love this Zai pick off as well. Lyle's well, still got an astral step. No remnant though to cancel Zai. So now gonna be back up and with Mira tossing him over. They're even gonna use the global sounds, the reinforcements. They're starting to come. If Zai can live long enough, they're gonna be in with the Omni Slash and up with a turnaround. Finally, Mikke feels strong enough to show up to the fight, but it's not gonna matter. As Zai, he'll still be killed off. And now with the backline, Winter's Curse shoes. They're gonna chase Maposhka inside the river though, so Liquid. Looking to completely leave Nisha alone, but Nisha needs no assistance. Somehow he's able to get out of danger. Spirit, they're lacking the stun, so the Marcy shrugs off the damage, walks away in the river, and Liquid, in the end, make it a pretty decent fight. It's a one for one, but it looked like it could have been so much worse. This actually, well, maybe it will be even much better for them. Again, this Observe Ward inside Radiant Zone Jungle. They're going to catch our collapse where we saw the kill prior onto Yatoro. And now they might even be able to get Mira as well. Nisha, you get a glimpse of the Rubik. Sanya's going to drop the Observe Ward as well. 
Looks like it's still going to be a tricky kill for them to find. Nisha's going to need a, a target to be able to jump off. And he juke through the trees, goes for the straight TP out, and they won't be able to stop it. Spirit do manage to cut their losses a bit, but another power rune coming up, and Liquid looking to secure that down here in the bottom river. We snagged up by the Juggernaut as the tier 1 mid tower goes down. It just feels like all the momentum going Liquid's way at this point. They're taking these objectives. They've just had such amazing vision. You look around this bottom river area. You mentioned the ward in their jungle. They've got two other wards around that area as well. They've just seen... And that's where all these fights are happening. Spirit are just playing right on top of Liquid's vision. Something we brought up at the start of this game, though, that the supports had to have a incredible warding game for them to... Really, it was for the Wyvern, which... I was the main thing I was bringing up the vision, but so far it's heavily enabled them to have this 7,000 lead. And now they're going to be able to claim Roche as well. Let's see if Spirit read it. And if they do, if they're going to even try and contest it. Yeah, Seem like they have the sense of what's going on there, especially when, you know, they see Silence in mid. They maybe even call Vision of Marcy as well. So it's, you know, just two or three heroes in the Roshan pit. Spirit just have other ideas to get out on the map here and not fight into that global silence. Marcy having just picked up an Axe Scepter is a huge threat as well if you take a team fight around that Roshan pit, so even if Spirit knew this is going on, I'm not sure they could do anything about it. They go to bottom? What's the call? Maybe tier 2 time. I mean, the, the Crete wave is right in front of that potential objective for them. Okay. Got most of their kind of key mid game items here. The Sanjin Yasha coming out in a sec on the Juggernaut. They finish off the pipe on the Visage. Marcy's Aghanim Scepter. Just maybe the Marcy Blink will be the kind of big go time for them. You know, they'll play the kind of map control game and look for pickoffs here and there and, you know, prioritize some farming efficiency. But once they get that Blink, I think they can really start maybe utilizing their last smoke or two to try and find some big fights against Team Spirit. Looks like they're trying to set up for a fight bottom. How are they going to be able to get into position though? Insania has a smoke if they want to sweep down. Boxy's already TP'd in to try and set up a defense. They might be able to read it though if no one shows top. Mikkei will do so now. Boxy kind of posturing very defensively, almost pretending like, okay, it's just me down here. I'm not really trying to defend. Like asking to be gone on. He comes side. They need a more valuable kill, though. Lava will duck off in the trees. It looks like Nish is scouting. I mean, still Maposhka. He's just going to... Wait, no him. way. Is he going to be able to TP up Maposhka? They know where Lala is, though. They've got Lala with the Axe Silence. Any more ultimate charges? Oh, they're even going to use the Global Sun. So try and TP Nish. Does he have to damage? He doesn't. I mean, that is a huge sequence of events there from Team Spirit. You use the global, everyone rotates down to bottom. They don't even take the T2 tower top as well. So, this is game continuing to get delayed slightly, slightly from Spirit. Yeah, that was a really kind of clutch escape there. Coming out from Spirit. Laurel just barely getting away from the Marcy. And yeah, that was a lot of time invested by Liquid. They were kind of, you know, just playing that game of cat and mouse, chasing, chasing around Spirit, who managed to just somehow get away without a single death and this is you know valuable ages time it is still liquid who's scaling very well here so i don't really feel like liquid's draft is necessarily on a timer uh, but spirit are gonna bounce sure? back they want to fight global's down he's got the shield rune activated oh they're just gonna rip it apart and soon his health will follow as well that's a great pick off to bring down can they get any more though boxy should be able to escape and zai also will make it away like Spirit did to them. They just get out, try and cut their losses a bit. I'm gonna maybe, yeah, lose these familiars here. It wasn't a resummon for Zai, so a couple hundred extra gold going the way of Team Spirit here, who have put themselves in a position where, you know, I mean, these mid game fights are very winnable for them if they can land their spells. Like, you know, particularly, I think the Winter's Curse and what that can bring to the table against Visage, against Juggernaut. Um, and then you combine, you know, the damage output of a Bloodseeker who's now gonna BKB. These mid-game fights definitely are not going to be as straightforward as you'd maybe hope for Liquid. Once they get that Jug level 20, I think that's a huge power spike for them, but they still got quite a bit of a ways to go to get there. 
Are we expecting them though to look to get much use out of this remaining ages on, on Mickey with the global science being back up now? I think they can like force their force the issue and get like a ton of map control out of it. Like they can basically just like take over whatever area of the map they want because Spirit can't really take a fight. But I just don't think they've set up to like force the issue by like going high ground or anything. And, you know, they're gonna come top, take over the entire die jungle. But if you're Spirit, you're like, okay, let's just we'll let them do that and we'll play around bottom. Um, but like that move, I don't think they can do a repeat of what we saw bottom, especially after it kind of backfired. I think you know they're just gonna be. As we see now, just playing the kind of map control, farming efficiency, maybe get the, at most they're going to get this tier 2 mid tower, or at least get a chance to poke at it with the, the Visage. Can they poke easily? Let us see. Wyvern gets it up, Mipoche can maybe with a spam with some of the impetus as well. Maybe they're just happy with sending them back as bottom lane. Claps and Lull together, looking to try and get a kill onto Boxy. I'm it's Spirit did bottom, that tower got down to 600 health. Like... You know, obviously Liquid were like, okay, yeah, they weren't just poking mid, they were poking top of the tier three, but the re the reason they were poking with Jug top is because they wanted to, they're basically saying, hey, Spirit, come back and defend, stop pushing our bottom lane, but... Ooh. Bye bye, Mapo... Wait, is he not even going to die to the Omni Slash? Okay, Aegis is out in 15. This is starting to get a little bit awkward for Liquid. Can Collapse catch anyone with the Winter's Curse? Doesn't want to start with the ultimate. Maybe Yatora can do so. Ruptures at the ready. I mean, well, they're still just going bottom. Lyle's not with the boys just yet. He wants to T3 tower. They're starting to TP back. He dodged it. Are you serious? Lyle dodges the global with the dissimulate. He's out of ultimate charges. Can the team get to bottom fast enough? Manta's going to be there in a couple seconds to maybe buy some valuable seconds. Lyle will still go down. Can they get Mikke? Collapse will stop the Blade Fury TP out. Yatoris are going to have enough damage, so Mikke stands strong. Doesn't matter about the rupture. Juggernaut's going to be okay for the moment. Yatoris going to try and turn his attention over towards Boxy, but this is not the fight that Spirit were looking for. They're in shambles now. Two have been killed off. Liquid have zero casualties, and Niche is hunting as well. Did they get a glimpse of Yatoro? Oh, they, they got, got him. him. Oh, Mira's just a little bit too late with the Glimmer Cape. The jump on the illusion was beautiful from Nisha. And it's going to be a long and painful chase down. Mira, they might even get him as well if he sticks around for a little bit too long. They'd love the extra plus one. And Zai's hunting. He's got the familiars to potentially catch up. They'll get a cool... No, they don't actually see him cross the bridge. But nonetheless, Liquid, what an incredible fight from them. Yeah, I mean, Lyle... Sorry, it, it was an amazing play to get away from the, the gank with the Global Silence, but his team were just a little bit too far to back him up there. I think Spirit, you know, there, there was this opening where once the Omni Slash was used, they're like, okay, let's go smoke at them and force a fight, but Laurel didn't have the, you know, once he gets caught bottom, like they're basically forcing a fight in kind of a 4v5 scenario. He didn't have their Void Spirit, and even with some clutch plays there, weren't able to pull it off there. I mean, the, the Bloodseeker... Getting 0.1 second left on his TP when that rebound sun caught him, so they almost managed to kind of, you know, cut their losses there on spirit side, but it just wasn't quite enough. Wasn't quite enough, and I wonder when it will be though for Team Spirit. We saw that what could have been the perfect fight for them back in the, the start. Yeah. Looked great. You, you had a wasted Omni Slash from the Juggernaut as well, where you then rupture him and, and you try and have your Toro Man fight him, but. It just goes to show how much of a net worth lead Mikke has over Yator that he could not even get the damage in. As now Nisha, just an yeah. easy pick up for him. Didi, no messing around with the use of the ultimate. It really was a, a farm advantage there. Because, yeah, the Jug survived the Winter's Curse, plus, like, Bloodseeker following it up with attacking him. The Jug having 6k net worth on top of the over the Bloodseeker is a big, big issue here in the late game. Um, but definitely, you know, that was Spirit's opportunity. If they were just able to link up with the Void Spirit, I think, and take a more 5v5 fight with, like, the Void Spirit damage on the Jug as well, I think they can come out on top there. It's unfortunate they just couldn't quite get to Laurel, and Laurel couldn't quite get away from the, the gank that came his way in the bottom lane. It was a real opportunity for Spirit, but Liquid, they weathered the storm and maintain a sizable lead here in Game 1. And they're going to keep this lead now into next Roshan, which potentially is about to spawn. Will be a long spawn though, it's up in two minutes. We'll give them time to be able to play the map. Zai's even looking for a solo kill with the help of- What is that damage? 
Okay, Zai with a freshly completed assault garage just rips apart the wyvern, and that's even without the max out familiars. The wyvern has not really felt the impact. These Winter's Curses is used, like most Winter's Curses, or maybe even all, have just resulted in the hero, like usually Zai surviving, or that one there in the previous fight on the jug, so. Suddenly, uh, Liquid's like, let's go high ground. We don't need ages. These towers are going to fall pretty fast. Oh, you see on this edge, so. Okay. Can't Blade Fury TPR now, but he's got the boys with him. Should be okay here. Yep, back to full health and... And then go back in. Keep poking at least until the Wyvern's back. There's no real threat here. Picking out the Tormentor. They want to maybe... Take that away Mira. from Team Spirit. Mira, Mira. Spooky place to be for the Ruby. Let's see what the call is going to be for Spirit now. You know that Roche, do you give her up for free? Is this the place you want to fight? Being as far behind as they are. That's a nice snipe. That's refresher from Insania. I mean, he needed the, the recipe, which is a big recipe cost. It's still getting two components. Oh, they see Mira in the lane too. Nisha's going to be able to There's get the no jump. jump. So, should be... Mira's going to make him work for it over the Glimmer Cape. Yatori's even thinking about moving on over. Yeah. <laughs> for a second, I was like, Spirit maybe going to force this fight bottom, but they did not have numbers at all. Like, I think there was a real opportunity there. Jug TP top, which made sense. Like, they kind of had already taken the enemy Tormentor. They were just looking to fall back, farm it up, wait for... Ro like, basically wait for Roshan, and then make their next big move, but... Spirit did not try and punish them bottom because Liquid was split up there. So if Spirit were able to force a fight, could have actually gone well for them. Collapse. Yeah. Again, the global. With Mickey's on the... They're just no fear. I mean, with the, the level 15 talent, it always feels nice. With the shorter duration, sorry, the shorter cooldown that you have with global silence now. So Insane is using it whenever he feels it required to get these pretty valuable kills on the map yeah it's so nice because global silence used to be this like it's, it's just like a two minute plus cooldown the entire game uh and it just felt like you have to use it once in a team fight and you can't use outside but realistically it's not like the best ultimate in the game there's so many ways to counter global silence so giving it a lower cooldown honestly has been such a quality of life improvement for silence one more post it has to happen you're this far behind people need to die on the map to let the cause farm but yep. they might know Zai's here with the Maelstrom Prox going over to the birds. Maybe they'll give them at least an idea. He's positioning. Yeah, they're going to back on off. Parker, this number lead is, is not getting any easier, though, from Spirit. In fact, it's continuing to get out of control up to 20k now. 96 win probability as well for Liquid, and now Roche for them to take. Things just getting harder and harder um, when you've got this farm discrepancy, not just like between the carries, but even all the other core roles, supports like Silencer getting all these late game items too, four staff drums, ref like, Refresher Silencer and these late game fights can be a, a big, big problem. Techies has been the utility hero. He's like, okay, Visage, you don't have to go for these items. I'll get the Solar Crest. I'll get the Vlads for us. And yeah, Liquid really have everything they need now with Aegis and Cheese. I think they're this is time where they're going to try break break the high ground and break through Team Spirit here in game one. And they can they can break it with ease. Zai can siege freely. Mickey can even do it w without really yep. much concern with the Aegis now. So just, you are... Just got to play around the Winter's Radiance Curse. That's the only thing you have to be worried about is this Winter's Curse. Middle you got to pray for a big one. See if Clap's going to be able to find it. I think he's closing in on the Scepter, which can definitely help out with his positioning. But you have double global silence now. Lacking a little bit of mana on Insania is the only thing. Kind of ignoring Can the heroes. Omni okay. Possibly. I think he doesn't want to be like pulled into the enemy base. The issue with Omni it's kind of a, not as bad as Troll, but it, it can sometimes Omni Slash can put you into kind of dangerous <laughs> waters if you get if you go into the enemy tier four. Even with an Aegis, maybe you bait your team your team in and then suddenly you know you've you've set up like a good winter's curse, so. I think Liquid is just playing discipline, focusing objectives. Like, really, the, the team comes is probably all about, like, just, guys, positioning, positioning. Do not give them Winter's Curse. 
Let Jug hit buildings. They can't kill this Jug. Not once, let alone twice, so... As long as we don't give them a Winter's Curse, this game is ours. Let's see what Collapse can do. Done some incredible things in the past for Team Spirit. Can you have another repeat here with the Winter Wyvern? In a, a game state which is... Almost... Oh, I don't want to say unlosable. That could jinx it. Global Silence shoes. You've got a second one as well to work with now. Mikis still got plenty of time here with the Ages. Love's even going to try and poe, forcing out some potential more abilities. Liquid, they will not take the bait. Dude, they are doing no damage to Mikke, man. He is just so farmed. The Atora just trying to do whatever he can with some of the right clicks. Mikke stands strong. Dude, he does not care. Now, Nisha sees it open. Yatoru might even go down. Cold embrace, but he's still in a lot of danger with his current position. Global Sans comes out to help secure the kill. Yatoru's got a buyback, but it's not going to matter because Nisha catches out a secondary support. Do they want to go deeper on Liquid? Looks like objectives is the only thing on their mind currently. They're happy with getting the full set and a buyback out of Yatoru. Still got the ages to work with. Mikke is a goddamn beast. It looks like he's getting low and like, oh, maybe they can kill him once. And then suddenly it's like a huge chunk of health just gets killed up. This maybe? time, actually, so surely got him, right? Surely? Right? Okay. okay. <laughs> There's the ones. What do you got for the second time is Boxy. He's going to be able to cover the respawn. Rupture use early on, but Mikke's okay, going to stand curse. strong. Boxy will not have that capability. Nisha's going to try and do whatever he can to keep him alive. But they're just going for the Megas. This is space and that's all it is. Who cares about Boxy's life? It's a valuable one. Might be in trouble now. They were able to cancel Mickey's TP out thanks to the ultimate from Collapse. Now, Mickey, the healing will lay it down. They're not even able to address it. Mickey back to full. Nisha jumps under the tier 4 tower. Spirit, one last attempt, Over. but it just was not enough. The Gs are dropped and liquid. Again, this is what we're expecting out of them. We've seen a couple games now. Both their victories in Dream League have...